interest in the future of work. In 2020, Richard produced the New Normal documentary, which was the first viral film to investigate the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset. And links to that will be included in the show notes. Um, over the past 16 months, Richard has devoted long seven day weeks to making a powerful new series of feature films, which investigate stakeholder capitalism enacted in 2020 by the World Economic Forum stakeholders. Stakeholder capitalism is a new political system that's currently being mandated by governments. Uh, with that, thank you very much, and I'll hand over to you, Richard. Thank you. Thanks very much for inviting me on your uh, to provide a presentation. So, um, yeah, so just um, just to give a quick summary on what I'll talk about today. Um, so I'm going to talk about stakeholder capitalism, which is our new political system. Not a lot of people realise that we we are now under a new political system around the world. It's called stakeholder capitalism. And it was enacted by the World Economic Forum in 2020. And it's a 10 year transition to full stakeholder capitalism. So we are just over, over one third, nearly halfway into that transition to full stakeholder capitalism currently. Um, so I'm gonna begin with an introduction to who I am. Um, I'll explain uh, where stakeholder capitalism came from, uh, what it is, their plan for enacting it. And finally, what we can do uh, about it so I'm a former TV producer. I used to work for ITV and then I became a director of photography uh, at the BBC and working on shows such as BBC Panorama. And then I left the industry and became a tech entrepreneur. I received VC funding to start a tech company called Yilo, which is a freelancer, man freelancer management ecosystem that's designed for the future of work. And during that time, I gathered an interest for what Klaus Schwab claims to have coined the fourth industrial revolution, which is a period uh, in our evolution when uh, AI takes our jobs and that period will affect all of us. So I've had a particular interest in that for quite some time prior to the pandemic. And then, of course, pan the pandemic hit and uh, and I was following the World Economic Forum and I saw some strange things happening there with regards to the Great Reset and the fourth industrial revolution. So just before the vaccine was rolled out, I was concerned about what was happening around the world. And I made a documentary called The New Normal uh, with a former colleague at ITV. Um, uh, he, well, the, the film went viral very quickly and uh, um, I'm still receiving some nice messages about that today uh, from people who claim it stopped them from taking the vaccine and they're quite glad that they, they did so considering some of the race, recent um, insights. Um, so after the film went out, I, I went back and concentrated on my tech startup uh, to finish building that platform. And meanwhile, I was doing some more research into the WEF. The first film, The New Normal, was really just um, me trying to show people what was happening around the world. It didn't really have uh, a final story or a conclusion. Um, but I used the period after the film went out to try and understand really what's going on. I didn't put my name to the first film because I was quite concerned uh, about the, lot, the, lot, the tyranny that was going on. Um, and uh, so I would finished making the app for my tech startup and uh, I decided after realizing what essentially was happening, I decided to make a, a short film and took one month to, to make that. But as I got more and more into the research, one month turned into three months. And then that time um, begin, began to extend um, the, the VCs or venture capitalists that funded, in me, uh, funded my company uh, told me to stop what I was doing. They were very much part of the WEF, Net, WEF network, which is the World Economic Forum acronym. Um, and um, they very much admired uh, the, the World Economic Forum and what they were doing around climate change and so forth. So they, they didn't like what I was doing and they told me to stop and essentially cut off all additional funding. Um, their partners, a law firm who I later found out was a World Economic Forum strategic partner. They also um, sent me a message to say they can no longer work with me, so they cut me off. 
Um, so the film turned from the three month project into a 16 month project. Um, every time I got to a position where I thought I was close to finishing, I realized that the story wasn't being told correctly. And then I continued working. So it was a very long period of what, seven, uh, seven uh, days a week, long hours, uh, committed everything I had to this because I was very concerned. And my aim with the film was that I understood that we're transitioning to another political system. And I wanted to create a film that was absolutely irrefutable, which meant it wasn't just factual. It had to be, the story had to be told by them. So the amount of research that had to go into you know, acquiring the the footage of them talking about this was quite uh, quite intense. And um, but eventually, I made this film, which I consider as being irrefutable. It tells the story of us transitioning to an authoritarian political system uh, called stakeholder capitalism. So uh, I released the film, and uh, yeah, so this is where I am today. Um, it hasn't been uh, hasn't been that long ago since I released it. So um, so where did stakeholder capitalism come from? So stakeholder capitalism was created by Klaus Schwab fifty years ago, and um, so just a bit of a backstory about Klaus Schwab. He is the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, and he was mentored by the authoritarian political uh, politician Henry Kissinger, and his father was a contractor for the Nazi regime. So Schwab after being educated by Henry Kissinger at this great idea for stakeholder capitalism, this new political system. And he enacted uh, or, or founded the World Economic Forum for the purpose of enacting stakeholder capitalism globally. Um, so he, he, he admits that himself, that that's in the film. So that's essentially what the World Economic Forum is designed for, is to enact this new political system, stakeholder capitalism globally. Uh, but it's been unsuc uh, unsuccessful unsuccess for the last 50 years. And um, so what Klaus Schwab has done over that period, he, 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 he founded a program called Young Global Leaders, which is essentially a program to indoctrinate uh, aspiring young politicians uh, and successful business executives uh, with his stakeholder capitalism ideas. So um, once he educates them or indoctrinates them with these ideas he then harnesses his powerful network across the, the deep state and places them into positions of power Klaus Schwab now boasts that um, the heads of all G20 country, uh, countries are now members of the World Economic Forum and uh, their mission is essentially to drive the transition to stakeholder capitalism uh, other heads of uh, world um, organizations such as the World Health Organization, the UN, the EU, all members to um, most Fortune 500 companies, as well as the heads of um, many monarchies. Um, so over the past 50 years, he was unsuccessful, but his fortune changed in 2020 when he launched the Great Reset Initiative, which is uh, his 10 year plan to transition the world to stakeholder capitalism. <clears throat> so what is stakeholder capitalism? So this is the way Klaus Schwab describes stakeholder capitalism uh, from an economic or academic standpoint. Um, so he, he makes reference to two existing uh, political systems that are in operation around the world. One is uh, shareholder capitalism. Now that's the system that we have here in the West that provides us uh, who own companies, the freedom to trade uh, with the interest of generating profit for our shareholders. And then there's state capitalism, which forces companies to trade by putting the state or the government's interest first. And that's the uh, system that you would see uh, in places like China uh, and across the East. So stakeholder capitalism, uh, uh, so in Klaus Schwab's words, he from these two existing two from these two existing systems, he's now created stakeholder capitalism. So, uh, in the in the movie, and I'm about to release a article too, uh, it shows that he's essentially saying that this new system, stakeholder capitalism, uh, uh, has acquired um, characteristics of both 
shareholder capitalism and state capitalism. So stakeholder capitalism is a system that uh, essentially forces companies to trade in the interest of a group of stakeholders. So we are currently under free market capitalism, shareholder capitalism, and it, it seems as though what stakeholder capital or what Klaus Schwab is saying is that state, sorry, stakeholder capitalism has acquired character characteristics of state capitalism uh, and the characteristic is authority, which means that we no longer have the freedom to trade with the interest of generating profit for our shareholders. We now have to trade with the interest uh, of a larger group of stakeholders. So who are the stakeholders? Stakeholder, the stakeholders uh, in, in Klaus Schwab's book and blog uh, which he refers to is um, our people and planet. Now his propaganda uh, is, is is essentially indoctrinating people to believe that this new system uh, acts in the interest of all people on the planet, as well as the interest of the health of the planet. Um, but ultimately, if it's an authoritarian system, um, not all people on the planet will be able to make decisions. Uh, people and planet is actually the slogan for stakeholder capitalism. If you look up his book, uh, Klaus Schwab's book called Stakeholder Capitalism, you'll see that people and planet is written there in bold on the front cover. And, um, and, and I make reference as well in my film uh, and in the article about uh, G20, there's a photograph of uh, all G20 leaders, so G20, uh, all the G20 country leaders, so our prime minister, including uh, the, um, the uh, I don't know his official title, but the president of uh, the, the Chinese Communist Party, Xi Jinping, um, is um, also a member of G20, and they have a family photo with people and planets written above their head, which is the stakeholder capitalism slogan which is clearly them all propagating that slogan. Um, so stakeholder capitalism is designed as a new political system that, that, that acts in the interest or forces companies to act in the interest of all people and the planet. Um, but when we look more closely at a blog, uh, that, that Klaus Schwab has written, he quotes, all these stakeholders crucially consist of, sorry, I'm going to make a, a step back, sorry. Um, he, he, he explains that the key stakeholders are, um, are NGOs uh, and governments, so NGOs such as the World Health Organization, um, the um, G20 governments, companies, uh, and international organizations such as the UN and EU. So um, these are his key stakeholders uh, and all of these organizations, the heads of these organizations are members of the World Economic Forum. Uh, and then I'll move on to the next part. Uh, further down in that blog, uh, Klaus Schwab writes, all these stakeholders crucially consist of people and make use of the planet. It is no surprise then that they should want to optim optimize the well-being of all of us, as well as that of the environment. Which So what Klaus Schwab is saying is that all of these key stakeholders, so the heads of all the G20 countries, uh, the NGOs, heads of the most Fortune 500 companies and international organizations such as the UN and EU, um, they're all people and they make, make use of the planet. Therefore, they should want to optimize the well-being of all of us. So essentially, he's saying that these global elites that are all members of the World Economic Forum and most of whom have been indoctrinated by uh, on his Young Global Leaders program with the stakeholder capitalism ideas um, uh, are all people um, and, uh, and and they have, the, have our best interests at heart. Therefore, we should provide them the authority to be able to act in the best interest of all of us. So, um, it's quite discreet that uh, that 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 bit of uh, copy that he's put in a blog. It's not uh, presented in his in his book or anywhere else that he's published. 
um but that's um quite a, re a revealing bit of information um working in the corporate sector um i'm horrified to learn that there is a large proportion of people working in the corporate sector who are who are supporting our transition to stakeholder capitalism um one of stakeholder capitalism's key components is ESG, which stands for environmental social governance. So I'll come back uh, to that uh, in, in a bit. But um, uh, so a lot of people don't realize that this is a corporate credit score for this new political system. They're just supporting this ESG um, score that's being forced on companies. Uh, Rishi Sunak uh, has made it mandatory uh, in the UK for large companies, and there's talk of him making it mandatory for all companies uh, later this year. But essentially, ESG is the credit score that forces us to adopt stakeholder capitalism. Um, as I mentioned in the corporate sector, um, a lot of people behind it and driving that transition without really understanding what this is and what it does. And most of whom are um, indoctrinated by these new ideas that um so uh talking about uh, i spoke about people and planet a second ago um they they believe that um that i'll come back on to, to the oppressed component of people uh in a second uh but more so they believe that the the, the climate change poses an existential threat. therefore we need legislation and policies that force companies to uh act uh more environmentally responsible so people on planet also means inclusive and sustainable um and and that's essentially the two main components that uh, uh that differentiates uh stakeholder capitalism uh with with other with other systems uh this is what Klaus Schwab alleges um is that this system is 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 better for people and better for the planet planet uh sorry sustainable meaning the planet uh and um there is a uh a talk that klaus schwab does um in my film and i make reference to it in an article that i'm publishing early next week uh where he welcomes xi jinping as a stakeholder to 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 govern us essentially and he is talking about the inclusive and sustainable model with him so what does inclusive and sustainable really mean? Um, inclusive ideas were adopted by Mao during the Cultural Revolution in 1966 when China shifted significantly away from capitalism to communism. And what Mao did was he indoctrinated the young working class to believe they were oppressed by the capitalists and encourage them to join social justice movements uh, to essentially overturn capitalism in favour of communism. So millions of people were hurt uh, and murdered during, during that period. Um, so uh, inclusive ideas is essentially Marxist ideas, the idea of telling of, of um, indoctrinating people to believe they're oppressed uh, and to believe that they need a system that's more inclusive of everyone. Uh, sustainable, as I mentioned, is uh, is addressing the existential threat of climate change. Uh, so, so stakeholder capitalism, to summarise, is a system that is more inclusive of oppressed people and sustainable from the threat of climate change. So that brings me on to Klaus Schwab's plan for enacting stakeholder capitalism. So he's been unsuccessful for the past 50 years uh, that you, you may have seen some pandemics and heard about global warming and so forth, um, but he's been very unsuccessful. Uh, but in 2020, he launched the Great Reset transition to stakeholder capitalism. The, state, uh, the Great Reset is the name of Klaus Schwab's 10 year plan so launched in uh, early 2020, uh, prior to this, uh, the, the NIH, which is a strategic partner of the World Economic Forum, uh, funded gain of function um, into the uh, development of a, um, of a 
uh, a powerful or a highly contagious uh, coronavirus and um and then shortly after or shortly close to uh the, the launch of the great reset uh klaus schwab and bill gates funded event 201 which a, is a tabletop simulation of a global pandemic not long after within three months uh covid19 uh became a pandemic was released from uh, the same area in which gain of function was fun funded by uh, the um, the NIH. Um, and um, so the 10 year plan uh, is quite a sophisticated plan uh, that he's created to transition us to full stakeholder capitalism by 2030. Um, the first thing that happens is they locked us down and the lockdowns weren't just to test how tolerant we were to tyranny uh, and how much we're pushed back, but also shut in our businesses. Uh, uh, the World Economic Forum claim in the Future of Jobs Report 2020 that um, shut in our businesses is causing a recession uh, that will eventually be as severe as the Great Depression. And this will result in 50% of us losing our jobs by 2025 to artificial intelligence. Now, the idea behind that is that once the economy crashes, um, then um, in order to be competitive, companies are going to be required to use technology rather than people because it's more cost effective. Uh, that's going to put 50% of people out of work. Um, there's been a slight correction on that on, on their latest, the great, uh, sorry, the, the future of jobs report in 2023, they've now made a correction and said that would be 42% by 2027. So uh, I think the delay um, there has been caused by a lot of people um, protesting uh, in the first few years um, and a lot of pushback, uh, which has delayed the transition to stakeholder capitalism. So why why is it important for Klaus Schwab um, to uh, remove 50% of our jobs uh, and replace them with AI? So um, just a little bit of background about the fourth industrial revolution. It, it, it is um, on our horizon. Uh, we're all starting to become more aware of the threat of artificial intelligence to our jobs. And the logic behind that is that AI is just, it's just going to keep evolving and becoming more and more sophisticated, particularly while we've got a system that incentivizes companies to be more uh, competitive and more innovative, and therefore it will drive innovation and the advancement of technology. Um, so eventually with that model, um, AI is going to become smarter and smarter and be able to do pretty much most of our jobs in the future. Um, but, um, but what Klaus Schwab had realized is that once once a large proportion of us lose our jobs to AI and we don't have any income or many of us don't have any income, it's going to cause significant problems with our current economic system and our current economic system will need to be revised. And the problem that will be caused is currently the unemployed have a safety net which is welfare or in the UK is a benefit system. And that's funded by the tax that's paid by people who work. But in the future, when AI takes our jobs, there's going to be less people working and paying tax and more people who are unemployed. And there's not going to be enough money in the welfare pot to support the growing number of unemployed, uh, which which poses a problem. Um, there's no safety net for, for these people. There's no welfare anymore. Um, so um, the stakeholders recognize that this is a point in our future where we become vulnerable. And um, their solution to this is to create a universal basic income uh, called a UBI, um, which is essentially funded by a robot tax that's applied to the large tech companies who own the machines that have taken our jobs. So I have to see some messages flashing up. Um, 
So uh, this is all very, of course, very controversial as far as a lot of people are concerned. But ultimately, um, uh, this is uh, this is something that's not been talked about. It's something that's very serious and something we all need to be talking about because it's going to happen very soon, uh, according to the World Economic Forum. And there's a lot of people that are going to get hurt by this. Uh, people with mortgages are not going to be able to pay their mortgages. You know, they're not going to have any income. So it's a serious um, issue that needs to be discussed. Um, so th the World Economic Forum uh, and their stakeholders recognize that once their machines, the, the large tech companies' machines take our jobs, it's going to cause a huge wealth shift because it, instead of the money going into our pockets for the work that we do, it's going to be retained by the companies and it's obviously going to be put into innovation and the technology. So our money will shift across to the companies who own the machines. And that's when the stakeholders will have the responsibility of providing us with a universal basic income to support us and provide us with our basic living needs, such as a roof over our head and, and some food. Um, so <clears throat> they recognize this is, this is a big problem for us. It makes us weak. It makes us vulnerable. It makes us dependent on the stakeholders. So this is a perfect opportunity to inflict tyranny and, of course, enact stakeholder capitalism. So their plan for locking us down, uh, according to the World Economic Forum in their reports, not saying this, but reporting essentially what is happening. In 2020, the World Economic Forum announced that the lockdowns caused by the pandemic has accelerated the transition to the fourth industrial revolution at that time already by five years. Um, so by 2025, that was the date when 50% of us will lose our jobs, uh, assuming then that it would they would normally have uh, predicted uh, that it would have been 2030 when 50% of us will lose our jobs by that, by that period of time. So, um, so that's one mechanism that the World Economic Forum are using to transition us to, fourth, to the fourth industrial revolution is essentially replacing our jobs with their machines and making us dependent on them and vulnerable, therefore, to their tyranny. Um, lots of other issues, lots of other crises, as they call it, um, they're using also to accelerate the tr transition to uh, stakeholder capitalism. I mentioned uh, inclusive and sustainable. So the inclusive and sustainable, inclusive ideas are now being applied uh, and have been for the last few years. Well, it happened in the first year. Um, inclusive, as I mentioned, means that a subset of our society are oppressed by our capitalist system. And, and the World Economic Forum have uh, a pre-planned solution, which is stakeholder capitalism, that makes us more inclusive. Inclusive ideas um, include um, uh, critical race theory, which is essentially uh, stating that black people are oppressed by our capitalist system um, and also the trans community. So we saw it happen with Black Lives Matter in 2020. And currently um, you see the trans community being targeted with inclusive ideas. So um, the current debate around the trans issue, what the World Economic Forum are essentially doing is they're propagating the idea using uh, gender identity theory to make, uh, and, and they're targeting the younger generation, which is what Mao did, because he believed the young were more impressionable uh, with inclusive ideas to believe that trans people are oppressed uh, by by indoctrinating the idea that we can be born into the wrong body and therefore if you are for example a male and believe you are female then you are female um, there's no argument with that and you should be allowed to participate in female sports and also use female restrooms 
And if anyone opposes that, well, then that reinforces the idea that you're you're oppressed. These are the capitalists, the the, the old system, the right wing capitalists um, who uh, are oppressing you. And uh, and 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 Klaus Schwab is uh, encouraging people to join social justice movements, just like what Mao did uh, to encourage us uh, or us who are indoctrinated with these ideas to join social justice movements uh, in order to uh, force a transition to another political system, which, of course, Klaus Schwab has pre-planned, which is stakeholder capitalism. Um, one of the social justice movements that uh, was uh, the heads of the uh, social justice movement, Black Lives Matter, um, was indoctrinated uh, on Klaus Schwab's Young Global Leaders Programme. Uh, the co-founder has also uh, explained that they are both trained Marxists, uh, which is very interesting. So, um, so that's what essentially the Black Lives Matter movement was about: is to um, is to get people to go out and destroy capitalism, which we saw with the with the riots, and now we see the same thing happening again uh, with the trans movement. So that's the inclusive ideas and agenda. It's 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 just pure Marxism, uh, and then the the second um, and sorry the solution to that is Klaus Schwab's uh, DEI uh, policies, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion. So um, companies are now being forced to adopt DEI policies, uh, which is being mandated with uh, the ESG score, which I'll come on to. And please remind me if I. Uh, skip over that uh, important part of this model um, but essentially it's forcing companies to employ, employ more allegedly black and trans people uh, essentially uh, to make them more inclusive so that's the way stakeholder capitalism solves uh, the alleged oppressed issue that we have um, uh, around the world and then his second solution uh, is uh, to the sustainable problem which is the uh, existential threat of climate change is net zero. So this is Klaus Schwab's policy, uh, which has now been implemented by uh, the heads of all G20 countries. Um, and it's essentially uh, the removal of uh, anything or the banning of everything that emits carbon. Uh, so all oil-based products. And uh, this is designed really to provide uh, or to stop the free movement of people. Uh, for us, it's to stop us from flying. Uh, stop us from owning uh, cars. Um, it's going to be very difficult for us to go out and buy electric new new electric cars uh, once many of us lose our jobs. Um, and then he has 15 minute cities. He's created 15 minute cities, uh, referring to Klaus Schwab, um, to essentially provide everything we need within a 15 minute walk. And the idea is that we won't be able to travel outside of that city unless we pay a carbon tax. We'll have a a a, a uh, a, a specific amount of carbon credits that we will be allocated and then you can sell those credits in, in order to offset your carbon emissions which is what the a lot of the big companies are doing now so why bill gates and a lot of the ceos of all the the large companies are um are flying around in their jets uh but saying that they are uh net zero uh because they're offsetting their carbon credits uh uh, that, that's a, a lot more detail to go into that right so i won't go into that too much at the moment so you can see here what he's done is he is fabricating uh, a, an environment an economy that is uh, and a society that is oppressed and uh and uh is at risk or immediate threat uh of us all dying from climate change and he's presenting a pre-planned solution which is his stakeholder capitalism it's an authoritarian system um, that provides authority to him and his stakeholders. So to summarise essentially what stakeholder capitalism is in a nutshell, it's essentially um, establishing the World Economic Forum and their stakeholders as a global government. So this, this new political system will be enacted by the entire world. We will have to adopt it. And it's establishing the World Economic Forum 
as the authority and their members as the authority. So um, it, it's quite a smart, clever idea. Um, um, but um, a lot of people are starting to, of course, see through it now. Um, ESG, Environmental Social Governance, is the credit score that's applied uh, that's becoming mandated by governments, which essentially means that governments are now mandating stakeholder capitalism. Uh, this is the credit score that scores companies on how compliant we are to Klaus Schwab's inclusive and sustainable policies. So how we, how compliant we are to uh, employing um, more allegedly oppressed people and uh, compliant to his net zero policies. Uh, and you saw a lot of the big tech organizations um, deploying um, ideas, you know, support, supporting Black Lives Matter and other, um, you know, and, and I guess they're also um, employing a lot of trans ambassadors, excuse me, um, to, um, in order to increase their credit score, their, their, their ESG credit score. If you don't comply, no, no funding simple as that so your credit score uh, essentially allows you to receive funding your esg score so any companies that's not non-compliant then no more funding which means it's the end of your business for a lot of the big companies so you um, can see it's a, a huge risk for myself starting a tech company who uh, i've also been uh, requested to um to to comply with ESG um and I've 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 said no I'm not going to um and this is obviously causing issues and I think the the investors are not um they're not stakeholders they've got nothing to gain as such they're just indoctrinated by this idea and think it's a great idea and think we should all be doing it it's uh you know the, you've got this world economic forum which is almost like the center of this hub of the finance corporate world and you know, people look up to those powerful people, and uh, and 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 the propaganda is strong. It, it, it sounds great. You know, um, we we're, we're creating a, a new political, a new a new system that that's better for people and planet, and uh, it, it's designed to make us uh, adopt it. It's designed to sound good, um, but just um, you know, just what I explained earlier on about the transition that happened in china called the cultural revolution no no transition to an authoritarian system is ever sold as being an authoritarian system uh is always to to be more fair you know more inclusive um it's a better system and that's why people were indoctrinated to get on board with that transition um so um the 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 slogan for the great reset plan is called build back better um, and the idea of that slogan is, is that, you know, we've got the pandemic that's uh, caused a crisis. We've got all these other crises happening, uh, which I'll talk about more in a second. And as we transition to stakeholder capitalism, their idea is from all these crises that we're being hit from, um, these black swans, as uh, Klaus Schwab calls them, the idea for that slogan is to build back better. And it's all propaganda. It's repetition. It's, an, it's the way of getting us to go along with these campaigns and these new ideas. Uh, future crises um, that, that are, um, that he's predicted will happen one this year, which will be a cyber attack. Now the cyber attack will, uh, will be a catastrophic cyber attack in their words. And um, I, I think these, uh, these crises regarding to our financial system is is designed to accelerate our transition to the fourth industrial revolution so it will further um you know speed up that transition to the period when artificial intelligence takes our jobs uh, that's compounded by a few other issues uh global debt um there's been i think uh, don't quote me on this roughly about 12 uh companies that have um gone bankrupt um since 2020 uh, and uh, and of course, all the wars. Uh, there's a lot of um, printing of money and money being sent to uh, out of 
the US, the UK, etc. Um, and the, the debt is rising. Uh, we've, we've, we've breached the ceiling uh, considerably uh, a while back. And uh, the, uh, the, the secretary, the uh, again, sorry, I need to be better with my notes. Um, uh, her name is Janet Allen has uh, uh, has warned us that it could cause a uh, this it, this could cause a uh, a a yeah, cat catastrophic uh, financial crash uh, if this is if not resolved. Um, she's the U.S. It might be a financial secretary. I'm not sure of her title. Um, so that's something to be aware of that the um, that a catastrophic cyber attack could uh, could com be compounded by uh, global debt and uh, cause a significant financial crash. And of course, the dollar crashing, um, where uh, the World Economic Forum are have been writing extensively about our new digital currency called Central Bank Digital Currency, CBDC. Uh, Rishi Sunak has announced he's, I think, the, the, the stakeholder that's really leading that, that campaign. Um, and uh, so the idea really is to crash the economy and build back better, in their words, with a central bank digital currency, which is a cashless society. Um, what's interesting about this is um, it's this this central bank digital currency is programmable, which means that the central bank, the stakeholders uh, will have the ability to turn it on, turn it off um, or switch on or off our access to uh, our bank accounts if we do not comply to their rules so um so the, it, again it's it's a way to provide more control to the stakeholders and um also there's another issue an economic problem uh by the stakeholders or caused by the stakeholders giving us a universal basic income now of course no corporation wants to give away their money if they keep giving away their money to us and we go and spend it with their competitors uh smaller businesses they will grow and the large corporations will lose their monopoly so uh they need to ensure they they get that money back so they are um so by issuing a cbd uh the sorry the universal basic income in the form of a central bank digital currency that way they can ensure that uh it's programmed to make us pay uh, to buy our food and to lease our homes exclusively from them. So it works a little bit like a coupon. They provide us a uh, UBI in CBDC. We can only spend it with, uh, you know, BlackRock who are purchasing uh, huge numbers of family homes. Uh, and uh, we can buy food from Bill Gates, who's the largest farm owner now, uh, who's, who's growing genetically modified crops and, um, and investing heavily in fake meat. Um, of course, meat is expensive to produce, so they don't want to do to provide us um, meat to eat. So, uh, so Bill Gates has a cunning plan to uh, to ensure that we only buy fake meat. Uh, that's the only thing that's going to be on the menu uh, with our uh, UBI. Um, and uh, he's they're using the uh, propaganda. Uh, uh, that the cows are causing climate change and therefore we need to stop um you know producing meat for many livestock uh, in fact um so that's his excuse for uh ensuring that we only eat fake meat uh it would be only, the only thing that we have on the menu uh anyway and we can purchase with our ubi um uh, i'm not sure whether i've i've covered everything there i think i might have done uh, and again i'm there's a lot more to all of this but i'm just skipping through because there's a lot a lot going on here um other uh problems uh that's on the horizon war of course um uh rishi sunak has recently warning us about the threat of war um and uh a lot of the stakeholders um a lot of people have different theories about why they're telling us what's essentially about to happen uh and they and they have done for the last four years um which i won't go into at the moment um but a lot of it is propaganda to prime us for what's about to happen there are other, other ideas as well which i won't go into here 
Um, but uh, yeah, so there's uh, we're, we're 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 in for a rocky ride until 2030, which is the date in which we reach full stakeholder capitalism, uh, uh, lockdown, uh, no no money, and and a lot of these crises are also designed to destabilize us, destroy our society, uh, and uh, break us really into submission. So that's the idea. There's also the threat of um, the, the the immigrant crisis uh, that, that we're seeing around the world of immigration, uh, large numbers of immigrants coming into countries. And uh, there's, uh, I haven't looked at the research yet, but there's a lot of um, information regarding uh, these people being trained by the UN uh, essentially to uh, act as soldiers when things do become very bad for us. Uh, they're there to essentially police us. Um, these are uh, all men uh, and they're of fighting age. Um, so if if they are supposed to, supposedly fleeing um, their country, then uh, it's bizarre they're not taking their family with them. Uh, but if you go to war, you go on your own uh, or, or with other men, and which is what we're seeing around the world at the moment. So uh, that that appears to be an army that's being created uh, to um, help create order for when um, Klaus Schwab did make reference to this. I'm trying to remember his quote. Um, it's in the film, so um, yeah, you'll you'll see that in the film. The film name is called uh, Stakeholder Communism. Uh, not stakeholder capitalism, and that's because um, uh, stakeholder capitalism acquires the authority part of state capitalism, which is the Eastern or the Chinese communist system. Klaus Schwab also in the film, you'll see him talk extensively to Chinese state media where he's praising the Chinese communist system, um, uh, saying that um, it would be good for all of us to adopt it and um, he's saying that there's a clash between two systems, state capitalism and shareholder capitalism, and one will prevail. And he believes state state capitalism, which is the Chinese communist system, which is which will be best for us in the short term. He's saying, I'm not sure why he said short term, but that's uh, uh, but it, it, that reveals a lot of those those comments that he makes there. Um, so then, finally, what we can do about it. <laughs> Um, so this was something I was considering when making the film. You know, I didn't want to end it on all doom and gloom. And um, so what I've done is I've, I've partnered with a, uh, a very strong tech team. And we're currently building an app. Um, it will be available in a couple of weeks. The, you know, I've got a, a basic version at the moment, uh, but in a couple of weeks, we'll have a more sophisticated version of it um, available. Um, it's it's a non-profit organization that is designed to, um, within the app, it's all initiative led. So it enables people to come together and uh, create initiatives or join initiatives that they like and enables everyone to collaborate in, in pushing back. Um, and also it enables them to fund projects. Uh, I think from the feedback I received, a lot of people feel quite useless. They don't know what to do at the moment. So this enables them, uh, provides people with a platform um, and um, it, it enables them also to fund projects. So uh, people like myself, for example, I can put my next film up, uh, which is what I will be doing, uh, the second uh, episode. And it enables people to fund it. So I know making this one, it, it, it has made me homeless. I made a lot of this from my van uh, and then I had to move back in with my parents and I'm feel, feeling the aftermath of not having an income for uh, 16 months while making it um, personally. So this provides a platform for all projects. A hundred percent of the um, the money that's, that's funded goes to the um, the person who creates the project. So it could be journalists who want to investigate this further. Um, so we need a way to be able to fund this investigation and fund initiatives that, that create resistance or, or push back. My concern is that the next, um, the next 
issue we have we won't have an option to push back it won't be a simple lockdown it'd be something more uh severe such as the economy crashing uh leaving us uh very vulnerable and um we uh yeah so it, 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 these are initiatives that uh enables us to be able to try and stop these from happening there's two that i've started to create and one is highlighted in the film which is to take back control of our local councils uh in the film there is a sequence where i show the film to glastonbury council and the mayor of glastonbury uh essentially freaks out once she sees the film uh like a lot of people who are indoctrinated do um and uh it's really to to start a campaign to help people understand they are victims of psychological warfare they're indoctrinated and particularly around council councils they're they're not fit to be in their position and they're no longer able to look out for the um they're not protecting our freedom uh so because of how manipulated uh they've become uh so um it's a campaign really to try and swap out people who are on the council with people who are not affected by the indoctrination and therefore are in a better position uh, or condition with regards to their mental health to be able to protect the freedom of their constituents. Uh, there's also another uh, initiative that I am working on, which is to target mainstream media to help uh, people who work for mainstream media, a lot of my old colleagues, um, to understand um, that we've actually shifted into another political system and um, and to help them understand essentially what's going on. So uh, we'll, we'll be creating lots of initiatives there. Um, as a non-profit, there's no money to be made with this organisation. There's no one person leading it. Um, it's really designed as a platform to try and encourage everyone to come together um i think also i'm going to talk a little bit more about that um the reason one of the reasons we're in this mess is because the stakeholders who captured mainstream media in the film uh, i investigate how the stakeholders are the head of the bbc the head of ofcom in the uk uh, lots of organizations in the US and around the world as well. So that's who's driving the propaganda and it's it's their narrative that is indoctrinating um, our society.